Welcome back to the channel. What is the difference between a 0.177 and a 0.22? Aside from size difference, I wasn't really aware that there was too much of a difference between the two, but since I've been doing this, more and more people are saying in the comments that 177 is better for range work or a 22 is harder. I just wanted to figure it out for myself. So I figured I'd come to the range today. Thank you very much to D-Range for letting me have the range for the day and just try to figure it out for myself. Darren very kindly not only lent me D-Range for the day, but he's also lent me his 177 rifle. I'll show you that in just a second. So my plan today is to put up a target, take some shots on that target with my gun and then take some shots on that same target with his gun, see whether or not I can notice a difference in how they're firing. If you're not new to air gun shooting, you're probably thinking to yourself, obviously. But it's not that obvious. It's not that obvious to me. So it's because it's not obvious to me, it might not be obvious to someone else. So I figured I'd make this video. Now at the end of this video, stick around because... We're gonna shoot some gel. Uh -huh. I'll make some homemade ballistics gel just so I could get a better idea of what it looks like when the pellets hit. Academic, it's purely academic. I just wanted to, I wanted to make some, I wanted to shoot it. I thought it would be fun. We're gonna be able to see what happens when a 177 hits and what happens when a 22 hits. I'm gonna put some targets up and then I'll show you the gun that Darren sent me. My gun is a MP02 Crow Puncher in 22. Absolutely love it. We've just chronoed them. They're very, very similar. Um, not much in it at all. And this one, I've heard a lot of people talking about these lately. Um, some good, some bad. I can't wait, to be honest. This is Darren's Air Arms S510 Carbine. I suppose one of the interesting things in this video is also gonna be the difference between a thousand-ish, maybe 1,500, I'm not sure how much they go for. Definitely a thousand pound-ish, second hand, and 250 pounds second hand. They're both the same foot pound, so I'm, I'm quite keen to just get into it, to be honest. Let's just shoot some, should we just, I'm just gonna shoot some guns. Right, so I've given it a bit of a zero at uh, the 25, 25 meters. Now, these are slightly different. These are exact jumbo heavies. I'll put a little thing down there, but these are the uh, JSB. I've, I've found that JSB are working quite well. I've, there's nothing scientific about this, let's be completely honest. It's not going to be very scientific. This is me just trying to figure stuff out. And as always, while I'm trying to figure it out, I might as well make a video about it because somebody else might figure something out. Uh, we're going to go for the top target for mine. Let's get a little bit of a zoom on that. Let's fire five to start with on each one and see what we, what we can come up with. Ah, that was awful. This is all me, 100%. I'm gonna calm down a sec. This is a terrible, <laughs> for a 25 meter group, this is terrible and I know it is. I'm leaving it in, cause you know, but this is me. This is, it's going where I'm telling it to go. So I can't blame anybody but myself. So let's try and calm ourselves down here a bit, Ads. Look at that. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna call that, chalk that one down to experience, and see whether or not I can use the remaining rounds in here on a different target. So let's go for the left hand target now. Well, there's only four in there, but still not the best grouping in the world. Right, in the interest of full disclosure, I, I don't know what was going on with that, um, that group. I don't know what was happening there. I think maybe if I'm gonna make an excuse for myself, it would be because I've gone over to the JSB Fat Lads. They're obviously a heavier grain. I'm not used to that. Maybe they react differently out of the gun, but that is obviously just an excuse. Um, it ultimately comes down to me. Uh, I don't wanna move on from the 2-2 until I've got reasonable groups out of it because I don't think it would be giving it a fair shake. This gun is fantastic and I'm letting it down. I'm gonna try my best to do right by my gun, basically. Um, I want this to work. I want this one to be good. So when I wanna move on to this one, I've got a good comparison. So it's only fair that I leave the bad group in though. I could just cut that out and pretend it never happened. Trust me, I did think about it. I'm just gonna probably not talk for a minute. I'll just, in the edit, it'll just be clip, 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 clip. Go top, 
Well, you'll see. You'll see. I've literally just had to go and double check that for myself. This is good. It, it kind of looks a little bit like I'm taking a Mickey here. I go from one of the worst groups you could ever imagine to the best group I've ever shot. Now, do I stop there? <laughs> I mean, that's bloody good. That's literally the best group that I've ever shot at all. Um, just, what difference did I, I literally just put some more air in. It's at its sweet spot now, 180. But that's all I did. It was a, I really wish I paid attention to what it was at before. But that's incredible. <laughs> I can go from the worst to the best group that I could ever imagine. I've still got some left in here. I'm gonna try again. See if that was just dumbass luck. Obviously not as good as the first one, but given what's gone before, the first one exceeded expectations to the point where I was actually partly convinced that maybe I'd missed. I don't mean to be too understated, but I'm over the moon with that. Over the moon with that. It goes to show the difference that a bit of air can make though, if that's the only difference is air and taking your time. I was a little bit flustered on the first one. <laughs> so I've moved the camera now. I'll have a look at this properly in a minute, but I'm buzzing with that. I've just been actually moving the camera and putting some more targets up, I'm looking at other people's targets that they've been shooting. And I'm pretty sure they're John's from Hawks ITV. He just pings them. I wonder if it's ever gonna get to a point where shooting groups that big, is this gonna be like a meh scenario for me? I hope not. Because when it starts getting that, it starts becoming a regular thing. I think that's when I start to move it out and make a bit more of a challenge for myself, but. Let's have a go with this now. I've had a couple of shots with it, I'm not gonna lie. I have had a couple of shots just to make sure. I've just literally plinked around the place, making sure that it's going in the right direction, if that makes sense. But I haven't tried any groups, so let's give that a go now. I wasn't gonna say this, but it feels a lot more rifley. It feels way more rifley than mine. I know that sounds like a really stupid thing to say, and I wasn't gonna say it, so I don't say it, Ads. But it does, it just feels, I, I suppose it is. Um, the way that your hand is, the way everything works on, on it. I like that my thumb can go up here, which I never really, I, I, I never really understood what people talked about by thumb up, but I actually really do like that. I think that that's really good. I haven't got that on mine. Well, I'm not slagging mine off, mine's great. Just prove that. Right, let's crack on and see what I can do with this one. Right, so. It's very direct, no messing about there. From a beginner's perspective, they're, they're the, roughly the same foot pound. They do behave massively different. It's really difficult for me to explain. They both do exactly the same job. They, they just do it in a different way. This feels a lot more class, it feels a lot more um, tight and together and and I don't know if it's the 177 element or if it's the gun itself I don't know what to tell you this is just I'm just giving, giving you my opinion they do the same job they're both as effective as each other but one of them just does it in a lot more of a refined and grown-up fashion petulant teen grown-up gentleman I think that's the best way to describe it now I'm gonna stop gassing on now because I'm really enjoyed that um, it was, I'm trying, I'm trying to be a bit cool here, do you know what I mean? I'm trying to not get too excited, but I'm going to go ahead and try and shoot some more now. I pulled that one again. See, I'm getting too cocky now, getting too carried away. Tell you what, let's go in between those two that I just shot, and then we'll prove that I can actually shoot something. There we go. That'll do. That'll do for that for a minute. Right, so Darren's just been, we've been having a bit of a shoot and he's thrown something else in. So 
Absolutely love this. It's bit, let me tilt you up that way a little bit. Is that better? There we go. Absolutely love this. This has been great. Um, for the point of the video, I wanted to see whether or not I could get decent groups with the 2-2 and decent groups with the 177 and try to draw some conclusions about which one's different, which if there's any, if one's better than the other. And then I was worried that maybe because of the price range on that one, the price bracket might be the bigger difference. It might be that one's an expensive gun. Maybe it's got nothing to do with the caliber. So Darren stepped in with a Gamo Coyote 177. I don't know how much these guns are. All I know is from what he tells me, it is a budget gun. And he says, help yourself. So while I'm here, I might as well, hadn't I? Yeah, I'm gonna go with, a, this is a 177 as well. See whether or not that it's down to the price. You know what I mean. It, can I get groups with a budget 177? Okay. It's a lot more substantial. It said this is a chunky, chunky gun. Okay, so I'm gonna go top left. So that's five in a pretty good group. I think we can all agree with a budget gun as well. So, so it's not down to the price. I didn't expect this to happen today. So I haven't got anything in me yet about what I'm supposed to say and what I'm not. But when it comes to budgets again, and I don't want to keep banging on about budgets. We know that budget rifles work and we know that they work well. I actually really like shooting this one. I'm really enjoying shooting 177. I think that I'm going to enjoy hunting more with that one, purely because I've shot rats with it, I've walked around with it. That one is fantastic and I love my 2-2. Please don't think that I'm shying away from that. But when it comes to this, actual target work, I'm definitely going to get a 177, is the upshot. Um, but the whole point of this video was, wasn't to try to figure that out. I mean, let's be honest, it was to try to shoot some ballistic jelly. So let's shoot some ballistic jelly. <laughs> Right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna set up these ballistic jellies. Let's be honest, that's pretty much all this video was about. Um, I wanted to try it. I thought it would be funny. So let's give it a go. <laughs> right, this is pretty much all I came here to do. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a slow-mo on it. That's the plan. Um, and if this works, I will be doing more of this type of thing on this channel. This is, uh, I'll level with you. I wanted to play with this gun. I wanted to play with this gun. I needed an excuse to say, can I borrow your gun? Just yeah, scientific purposes, Daz. <laughs> so I wanted to borrow the gun. I also wanted to try this jelly out. Cause let's be honest, it could be good fun, couldn't it? Try a lot of different pellets through this jelly. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether or not you think this would be a good idea. Because I think it would. I think it'd be fun. All right, so let's shoot target a sec. Okay, that's pretty much plumb where it's meant to be. So let's go for let's go for the bull. See how that worked. Now I have to admit the slow mo wasn't that great but it's definitely something I should work on in the future. Leave it in the comments if you think it's something that you'd like to see again on the channel. It's still pretty cool, come on. That went, that went better than I thought. I really hope that slow-mo works on that. That was bloody brilliant. It looks great in that jelly, I'll show you in a minute. Just wanna crack on before the sunlight runs out because and just uh, make sure I got me zero on this a minute. Bang on, right. Let's see what the 2-2 two -two looks like through the jelly. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so when it comes to shooting the ballistics gel, uh, I can 
really come up with anything scientific to say about it, aside from there's a lot more uniformity from the 177 than there was from the 22. The 177 also drilled a lot deeper. It went sort of two thirds of the way through, whereas the 22, I fired that, I shot that from both sides, barely made it halfway. But no, but regardless of the result, it looked cool as hell anyway. Um, now that I know this works, I'm definitely gonna be using this in the future again. And now to come to some sort of conclusion for this video, it actually turned out to be a way more conclusive video than I thought it was gonna be. Probably not for the same questions that I asked at the very start, but the question was 177 or 22, what's the difference? Um, 177 for me is way more fun to shoot on a range. I way more enjoy this, the 177. And having the opportunity to shoot um, a budget 177 next to the Air Arms S, S510, which is not a budget 177, the only difference is how they felt. Uh, they both performed exactly the same way. I can't draw a comparison between the performance. I can only draw a comparison between how they felt in the hand. And that's it. I know where the money goes with the S510. I know why people spend extra money on it. If I had that money, I probably would spend it because I love that. It was absolutely phenomenal. It was like a, it was like a, it was like a needle, pew, like that. The Coyote, way, <laughs> way more, um, more of a bully, I'd say. More of a bully. It's a little bit way more rambunctious, a lot more beefy, but probably more in my price bracket. So I'm happy about that. Two two on the range it still worked absolutely perfectly. I've had today. A bloody good day. I've had a really good day today. I've shot groups that I didn't think I'd be able to shoot and a few weeks ago I probably couldn't have been able to shoot. So I'm over the moon with that and I've got to experience these two 177s. So the conclusion is, different. It, is one better than the other? Probably not in the grand scheme of things. Is one better than the other on the range? I'd say 177 is probably going to be better for me to develop my skills. I'm going to probably definitely, I've justified buying one, and I? That's pretty much this whole video was to justify buying one in the new year. So although I can't give you anything more scientific than that, aside from how I feel about it and how, how what I think, that's pretty much all I could do in these videos. Yeah, 177 kicks ass. I absolutely loved it. The S510, brilliant. Coyote, absolutely great. The MPO2, phenomenal. Um, so yeah, it's been a good day at the range. I've had a great day. Thanks for joining me in this video. Sorry there wasn't anything more conclusive than that, but I've had a great time. I hope you had a good time watching it because I had a great time making it. See you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.